Yo, what's good, Chad? I'm drinking day-old Sprite. What's up, Tommy? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This is gonna be a weird stream. I didn't really prepare anything ahead of time, aside from, like, a couple of uncollected thoughts, but I feel like it's almost better that way. Um, but yeah, today we're, we're, t today we're chatting. I have a, I have a topic, um, that I thought would be the clickbait of all time, Lamau. Because people pro- my, my thought is that people- also, my fear is that people will see, like, oh, the, the thumbnail and the title, and they'll be like, oh, um, well, that's hearsay, that's, that's heresy, that's, uh, you can't, uh, you can't say Nier Automata's bad, that game's a masterpiece, everyone knows that game's a masterpiece, um, it's not really intended to be clickbait, though, it's more to make a point about an article that, uh, got brought up on a stream last week that I wanted to talk about, uh, but also clickbait, Lamau. Um, get clickbaited, I actually do like Nier Automata. I just like it the least out of all the Draconeer games. But, I don't know, that's all like... Well, we'll cover it at some point. Maybe, possibly. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to, trying to find the article so I can have it up on screen. Because, uh, it is what started this whole thing to begin with. There we go. Um, anyway. Uh, I guess starting from the start, uh, this is a weird idea that I might turn into like a, a thing I do more frequently. Yo, Dr. Hero, welcome to Memberbs. What's good, gamer? Heck yeah. Th thank you for rejoining. Hell yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Now let me um, reset, transform. I'm trying to crop the article onto stream right now. Uh... There we go, that works. And then I want to... Um, does that... How much does the text occupy? I think I can make it like 16 by 9-ish. Uh... Yeah, and crop it a little bit this way. Just so it doesn't look too janky. There we go, that looks about perfect. Back again, had a problem with membership, but we all good now? Heck yeah. Read the article, seemed like the dude just had a personal vendetta. Yeah, they, uh... I don't know, we'll talk about it, because I have weirdly complex feelings about it. I don't think it was overall a bad article. I think the way it was titled, and the way that certain things were talked about, was just flawed more than anything. Um, and also some takes are actually just, like, kinda... So, some real headassery. Um... But it got me thinking about my feelings about the game. Sort of like I was saying before I got distracted by actually putting the thing on the screen. Um, this is... Um, a thing I might want to do in the future. Uh, because last time... Well, this all started. I, that's what I was talking about. This all started last Wednesday. During the Yakuza stream. Drakening the Guard. Yo, what's up, Acheron? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I am Dracking the Josh. Uh, at some point, I don't remember the context anymore, but we got talking about this article, apparently. Oh yeah, we were talking about whether or not the androids piss, that's what it was, because fucking of course we were. I'm Ezra Andromeda. And, uh, we, uh, Riker ended up looking it up to get me the lore on why the androids piss, and we got distracted because they found this article where, um, and, and the article's title is Near Automata, the worst game of the year. It was written in 2017, so the year the game came out. Um, and that's a bold statement to make. Um, so I ended up reading it after stream. I told them to post it in my Discord. And it got me thinking about Near Automata 
And then there was also a lot of Drakengard stuff going on during the week, so it just got me thinking a lot about the game and my feelings on it. So I had the idea of doing this stream, which, like, it's labeled just chatting, because that's what it is. We're sitting here, we're chatting, but it, it, it's not a, a... Depending on how this goes, I might make this more of a thing, where I guess you could call it, like, a live video essay of sorts? It's not really an essay in the sense that I didn't write anything ahead of time, but... Like, where I pick a topic about a thing I think I have interesting things to talk uh, to say about, and then I just kind of, like, freeform dump all my thoughts on it and try to sound smart and interesting, and it's, like, a thing. Um, and, yeah. Uh, I think that's, that's good, though. It, it's sort of a format I see a lot more on, like... I don't know. I, I, I feel like I see it primarily on, like, political streamers. Uh, more than anything, because I do watch a fair few of those, despite not really wanting that to be my content. Um, but I don't think it needs to be exclusive to that, but it's just like they'll go live and they'll have a topic they're talking about and they'll like be able to discuss with chat in real time, but also like have a point or like a thing that they're talking about. And I think, I think that's the thing I would enjoy doing on top of gaming streams. So we're going to try it out today a little bit. So it's not just going to be about the article, it's going to be about Nier Automata as a whole. Um, and like I said, if it goes well, if y'all like it, um, might do more of it. Might do, might do more, might do more stuff, uh, like this. So, um, yeah. But this week's topic, obviously, is, uh, Nier Automata, and why I think it's the, uh, worst Draconeer game. And I need to qualify this statement, because like I was sort of saying in my, my, like, initial waking my brain up, sort of like revving the engines... You may have noticed I do that at the start of a lot of my streams. I just like ramble on about whatever my thoughts are with no cohesion. It's kind of like you when you have a lawnmower and you have to like pull like like an old lawnmower and you have to like pull that string a bunch of times to get the engine going. It's kind of like that for my brain. Um, so if you ever wonder why I do that, uh, that's why. Um, I don't really intend to do it, but I feel like I do it at the start of pretty much every stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um. What was the thing? Oh yeah, no, um, so the title sounds like clickbait, but it serves like three purposes. One is absolutely clickbait, because you know, like people are gonna see it, they're gonna be like, oh, well Nier Automata is a masterpiece, obviously, so I'm gonna go see what this schmuck has to say. Like, I'm not gonna lie and say I don't play the algorithm a little bit, but like, uh, the second is because it's a true statement. I do genuinely think Nier Automata is the worst Draconeer game. It is a very personal opinion, and it's also, as we'll see, um, kind of uninformed in a sense. Um, and I'll talk about that when it makes sense to talk about it. Uh, but, um, like, genuinely, I do believe that Nier Automata is my least favorite. Excluding Drakengard 2, because while Drakengard 2 is a perfectly fine game, I tend to ignore it for reasons I've, I've talked about a lot. Um, but I think if we're including that, that would actually be my least favorite. But we're not, because this is my stream and I, I make the rules. It's my birthday, and if I want to watch all the Barbie Princess movies, I'm going to watch all the Barbie Princess movies. Um, and the third reason is to illustrate a point about why, um, and we get to do a cool transition. It would have been cooler if I if I didn't uh, if I didn't point it out, but that's what we're doing—a cool tran transition. Um, this fucking article and its title is head assery to an insane degree, um, and by making my title what it is, I, I am I am demonstrating the correct way to go about titling a piece like this. <laughs> because just saying Nier Automata is the worst game of the year is, um, j I mean, I can't say wrong because it is an opinion statement. But just presenting it, like, you do have to write your article in such a way that it backs that up. And this person just kind of doesn't. Still wonder why the W is in brackets. That's because of the ending names convention. Whatever, like, the... Whatever, like, the ending name is. Um... It, they, they... Whatever letter it is, it's, like, in brackets and in the title. It's, it's a thing the game does. Um... But it is kind of obscure. But then again, the article is definitely directed at people who, um, people who, uh, 
who already played the game, so I can kind of forgive that sort of like niche weird reference thing. What's up, Brandon? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't. I never learned how to read. Um, this is all. This is all just me guessing what the article says. I, I don't actually speak any languages or read any languages. I'm actually a. I'm actually an AI chat model. But um, yeah. So this is the article in question that got my brain started on this to begin with. So we're going to start by just sort of reading through it and talking about, you know, what I think is and isn't good in this article. Um, and then we'll just sort of go from there, depending on where my, um, where my brain takes me on this. So, yeah. Um, and I should say, and actually let me pin it. Um, I, I meant to do that, but then I took a nap to refresh my brain and I completely forgot. Uh, I will be spoiling Drakonir games, you have been warned. And I'm gonna pin that so that people don't get angry at me and I don't have to keep repeating it. Um, because this article does spoil a lot of the game. Um, a lot less than you might expect. Um, and that is a big point that I think, I think this person that wrote the article missed a lot of the point of the game in a way um although again i do actually agree with most of the points made here to some degree um uh ow death did i say yet that i'm drinking day old sprite i'm drinking day old sprite it's pretty tasty um so um, yeah, fucking let's go. Warning, this article spoils most of Nier Automata and a hearty part of the original Nier to boot. Nier Automata is the worst game of the year, and I doubt that very many people share that opinion. True. I don't know what your critical landscape is like, but judging from my social media... Oh, I, I should also... One more, one more, uh... One more disclaimer I wanted to throw out. Uh, please don't go after this person. I don't expect any of you will. I tend to think that the people watch me usually have a brain and don't like, you know, feel like they need to harass people because they disagree with them. Um, but don't do that. I need to say it out loud because, like, some people are silly goofy like that, you know. But, um, anyway, now we can continue. I don't know what your critical landscape is like, but judging from my social media feeds, the internet has had almost nothing but praise for the Square Enix Platinum Games developed near Automata, both at the time of its release and once again as we enter Game of the Year season. Throughout the year, I've been hard-pressed to find anyone beyond a handful of friends who thought this game was anything short of a heart-wrenching masterpiece. With the one exception of the Video Game Hell podcast, I don't actually know who they are, I didn't look into that or that podcast. I might, at some point, for a future project, but that's that's well into the future. Um, who captured most of my initial feelings about the game at launch. Aside from a single podcast, the nearest thing approaching criticism of Nier Automata I ever saw were tweets rebutting the idea that the game was too horny. A perception that I think comes from more from a subgroup of the game's fans, and to be fair, the game's director, than anything in Automata itself. Um, and here's where I stop and say that I think a lot of... It, it's so fascinating, right? Because 2B as a character, and really like most of the characters in the game, especially the female characters, are designed to be hot. That's not new to the Drakonir series. That was a thing in uh, Near Replicant. That was a thing in Drakengard 3, for sure. Um, and it was also a thing in Near Automata. And I think it belongs in Near Automata the least. I've never been a huge fan. But at the same time, I don't really have anything against having, like, characters that are meant to be attractive just for the sake of being attractive. Um, I know there's a lot of discourse around that, and I don't want to get involved with that for a number of reasons, but uh, I do find it fascinating that a lot of people think that that's a big deal, and, and I realize, I'm, I'm saying this, this person clearly doesn't actually, like, care about that, they're just pointing it out as, like, an example of criticism. I, I'm, this has nothing to do with the article, but since it's being mentioned here, that's always been one of the things for me with Nier Automata, is, like, I think people see that, and depending on the type of person they are, they they assume one way or the other that it's going to be a certain type of game. It's either they like that sort of thing, and therefore they want to play Nier Automata because character hot, or they see the character hot and they're like, oh, this is just going to be a game for horn dogs. I'm going to stay away. 
And it's one of the more unfortunate aspects about Nier Automata for me, but interestingly, where I think that would impact a lot of games negatively, it managed to sort of avoid a lot of that. And I think that has to do with being part of a pre-existing, um, at the time, pretty niche series that, um, you know, enough people were talking about it as more than that, that it was able to kind of, uh, kind of escape that, which is actually really to the game's benefit. It's just one of my more favorite things about it is that it is able to get away from that sort of like dichotomy of, you know, game with characters with big ass and boob. Um, and, and extending that further, Drakengard 3, a lot of people like that game. Um, a lot more than would typically for a game that presents itself the way that that game does. Um, so if there's one thing Yokotaro is good at, it's it's uh, putting his love for hot women in his games w without hurting them. Um, so shoutouts to that. And I say the one thing, he's good at a lot of things. Um, robots trying to reproduce and stuff. It does have hints towards it, but it's... Hmm. Yeah, because there is, like, early on in the game, there's the scene, the robot pit, where uh, the the robots are having sex, but, like, they can't because they're, they're metal tin cans with ball heads, just kind of, like, smashing themselves against each other. Um, but that's sort of to convey more of a point about, like, what all the machines are about. Um, the androids are able to simulate sex, um, alongside simulating eating and drinking and pissing, as we found out last time, um, in an effort to make themselves empathize more with with he the humans that they're supposedly trying to protect. And uh, I say supposedly because, um, well, I don't know, I don't remember if the article... No, the article definitely talks about that um, later on, so that will get spoiled. So that, that qualifier will make sense. But um, it's definitely not like the core of the game at all. It's it's more just to demonstrate something about the machines and the androids. Um, but like 2B being hot is specifically because 2B is hot. It, it doesn't serve a plot point otherwise. It, that That is the whole reason that 2B is hot. Um, and I find that fascinating. I, I think was sort of just the point um, that, that I was trying to get at there in my really long-winded tangent that has nothing to do with the actual point of the stream. Um, but it made me think of it. So, we we out here. Personally, I don't think Nier Automata is a horny game. Exactly. I think it is the worst game of 2017. Not exactly. Its critical reception doesn't make me eager to put that take out in public, but at the same time, I feel compelled to. I don't think I'll change anybody's mind by writing this, We'll return to this, but I'm going to let it slide for now. But I do think that if I let the year pass by without putting any of my issues with this game on paper, I'll regret it. With all that preamble out of the way, let's let the take officially commence. I promise that's the last you'll ever hear about 2B's butt. Um, and being alive is pretty much a constant stream of embarrassment. So true. So true, Pods. Nier Automata is not the worst game of the year because there's nothing to like about it. In fact, there are a lot of things in this game I genuinely enjoy. Hello Ezra and chat, you what's up Isom? Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. There's a cast of cool robots, many of whom are lesbians. True! Which I'm already very into as a gay robot myself. True. There's a stellar music that really punctuates the haunted, melancholy vibe of some of the game's areas. Both things I like in general and specifically wanted to see again after the original Nier. There's themes of existentialism, of society, literally the jonker and how society is created and recreated and how non-human beings would understand personhood when their only frame of reference for such a thing is human all of these are things i'm very much into and the reasons that i bought near automata the second came it came out on pc even though i had planned to get a ps4 just a few months later um this is another thing we'll be returning to um because they do actually mention the performance of the game and uh, they definitely shot themselves in the foot for this by buying it on PC, but I can give them some slack on this because they had no way of knowing that, especially at launch. Um, the problem is, these things that I like aren't the elements of Nier Automata that really matter. Um, okay, uh, again, we'll return to this later. I'm gonna blue balls y'all on this one, but they introduce a lot of things early that I, I want to complain about. 
<laughs> because it shows a little bit of a lack of research. Um, halfway through, the game tips its hand. Automata has one thing it cares about more than anything else, and it starts tossing out every other part of itself in pursuit of its goal. Characters die left and right, themes are hastily wrapped up or abandoned altogether, the pacing stutters and grinds to a halt, and the storytelling nosedives, all in pursuit of the one thing Nier Automata cares about more than anything else. Tragedy. This is a game that is trying very, very hard to upset its player. Nier Automata doesn't just want you to feel sad, it wants you to feel despair. Yes. Um, I guess I can talk about this now, because this is going to permeate the whole article, so I kind of want to get this discussion out of the way early. Um, there's a very famous, and I mean very famous, clip of Yoko Taro, the director of this game and the other Draconeer games that matter, um, where he specifically talks about how he goes into writing a story, um, and what he says is that when he's writing a story, and this is very paraphrased, of course, so it's a little bit more nuanced than this, but just basically, like, high level, he has an emotion that he wants players to feel at the end of the story, and then he writes the entire story backwards from that to come up with a way to get to that point. So, like, when you get here, like the line, Nier Automata has one thing it cares about more than anything else, and it starts tossing out every part of itself in pursuit of its goal. Yes, it does have one thing it cares about, because that is the point. And this is sort of exactly what I said when I first learned this article even existed last week. Um, you can just not like that. You don't have to justify it. If you don't like stories that are written that way, you don't like stories that are written that way. So to use that as evidence to say that something is bad is flawed. And again, it has a lot more to do with how the article's worded than the actual content of the article, because we will get to points that I agree with. Or at least that I think I agree with. But like that... As like an introduction to your concept, already has a massive hole in it because that is the point it's not a flaw of the way it's written it was intentionally written to get you to feel the one thing it wants you to feel um so i don't know i mean i, I benefit of the doubt the person probably didn't know about the uh the game developers conference talk but like i don't know i don't know i'm definitely biased in that i know a lot about Draconeer and the things around Draconeer. So I am trying to acknowledge that. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. Do some research, learn some things, get some perspective on stuff. I try not to give heavy handed opinions without doing that. So I don't know. I guess I try to hold people to that standard. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but just uh, just keep that in mind that, that the thing they're describing is exactly what the artistic intent was. Um, so where were we in here? Nier Automata doesn't just want you to feel sad, it wants you to despair. This is the kind of game that starts with a post-apocalyptic setting and it introduces another apocalypse halfway through. But Nier Automata is so busy tripping over itself to try and bum you out that it can't be bothered to do it right. The tragedy in Automata is predictable and fake, turning to cheap character death and convenient plot turns so often I began to exclusively question the story rather than engage with it. Really? I asked the game over and over again. This is the story you decided to tell? And it was a bitter question because of how much promise the game had shown me at first, how excited I was starting the download, and how disinterested it left me in the end. That's why Nier Automata is the worst game of the year. Again, wording. I think, really, I wouldn't even be talking about this article if it was named. That's why Nier Automata is my worst game of the year. That's all that had to be done to this article, I think, to fix it. Like, genuinely, I think I wouldn't be talking about it right now. Um, so, I mean, obviously I shouldn't have to say this because we've established already that Thinking a game is bad, thinking a game is like the worst thing of the year or the worst game of 
pee pee poo poo. That is subjective. That's how you feel. When you say earlier in the article that, um, where is it? I know which one I'm looking for. Um, I don't think I'll change anyone's mind by writing this. Then what's the point of presenting it that way instead of just saying it's your own opinion? It would have gotten equally as many clicks because it's a unique take. I can't even say like, oh, it's kind of justified because clickbait and that's how that's how internet articles work because people still would have read that because that's an interesting take, I think, especially at the time it was written. But um, I don't want to drive that point home because that's like the most obvious way to dunk on this this article. So um, just any other time that gets that gets brought up, just, you know, fucking stop phrasing it that way, you freak. I'm sure you're a very talented writer. I respect that you feel this way about the game. Just don't do that, please. <laughs> um, let's step back a bit to establish what this game is before we talk about what it becomes. Nier Automata is, at first, the story of a war-torn Earth far, far in the future. Aliens have sent an autonomous force of machine soldiers to Earth as a precursor to their invasion of the planet. The surviving remnants of mankind fight back through an organization of androids named Yorha, having retreated to a shelter on the moon. You play as a pair of Yorha androids, the taciturn professional, or taciturn? Yeah, the taciturn professional 2B, and her younger, more naive partner 9S, who hack and slash their way through battle after battle as new facts about the fight are revealed, and long-term plans come to fruition, eventually bringing the conflict to its final conclusion. Let's not entertain this setup for too long. The twists in Nier Automata start coming pretty early. First, it turns out that the aliens are dead, having perished soon after arriving on Earth. The machines continue to fight without masters because the network that controls them doesn't need oversight to continue its work. The humans are also long dead, and their supposed secret base is on the m their supposed secret base on the moon is just a data server and a story used to keep the Orha androids fighting. The whole war is pointless and has been for centuries. No matter who wins, there's nobody left alive to claim Earth when the dust settles. All these twists are near Automata's favorite tactic to make you sad. You thought those were just mindless enemy machines, but it turns out they have feelings, you bastard. Um, I mean, that's a non-example. The game's very obvious and heavy-handed, almost to its detriment, that, like, like, within the first 15 minutes, you know that the whole, rah, rah, the, the, the robots don't have emotion, the robots don't think, they're mindless machines. You know that that's not um, the case, and you're meant to know that that's not the case. The, the game doesn't try to hide that to, from you, and, and if it does, it's definitely not for for long enough that they intended that to be a plot twist. You're playing a video game where you have robots that act like humans. That That's not a twist. Saying that that's like thinly veiled and oh, the game's trying to trick you to make you feel sad is... I mean, I mean that's not what the game... You, I don't... There is a lack of media literacy in that, because if anything, the game is very upfront about like flipping that trope on its head, because pretty much every game that does that, that has this sort of premise, has that same quote unquote twist to a point where it's predictable. So Nier Automata flips that on its head by just not bothering. Um. And you are absolutely meant to be to be sitting there as a player saying, hey, I know these machines have feelings and thoughts and whatnot. And you're supposed to be suspicious of the main characters religiously reminding themselves that they don't. Because it's not so much that they don't believe it as it is they continue to tell themselves that to make them not feel bad about what they're doing. It's a little bit more ambiguous with 2B, but 9S especially is established to be way too smart to not already know that the machines are autonomous to some degree. Um, now, they do list other ones out, and that's definitely not something they hammer in too much, but like, just, I feel like that doesn't belong in here as a criticism because like the game is very very clearly doing the opposite of that in in that case
All right. Anyway. You thought we were helping this character, but you were actually making everything worse. You thought this character was going to survive, but actually they die. Do you feel sad yet? Um, and actually, as I said, I kind of glossed by it. Um, this person claims that they bought this game because they like the original Nier, and I don't doubt that. But Nier Replicant was about this specific thing. Like it gets talked about later, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna come out with it. But like, you actively cause humanity to go extinct in that game because you think you're helping. So to use that as a dunk on this game, and I'm not even sure exactly here what they're referring to, but like, you like that. <laughs> Anyway, um, do you feel sad yet? Most of Automata's twists are totally predictable. At this point, it'd probably be more surprising if the machines didn't have feelings. Again, you, you acknowledge what I just said. And they get old really quick. It's shocking the first time Automata kills off a large group of characters at once, but the second it starts trying to get you emotionally invested in a new group, you know what's coming a mile off. The story becomes so obvious and artificial that you detach from it because the game's killed off nearly everyone or everything you'd otherwise care about. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, we'll return to that, because I think it's a cooler aspect about the Nier and Drakengard games in general, how they handle death. Um, and it's definitely not ripped from something I was actually watching earlier this week. Um, absolutely definitely not, but it's a, uh, it's a cool thing that the game does that I never really thought about until I started thinking about this article in relation to other media I'm consuming, which is, which is a cool thing about media and game critique and video essay culture and pee-pee-poo-poo. -poo. Um, Nier Automata's biggest twist and where it hurts itself the most is the one where 2B dies. Alright, so now we enter real spoiler territory. So I'll give you all a second here. Alright. Halfway through the game, after the beginning of its third route, C, a failed attack on the machines ends with a logic virus. 2B dies? No! Yo, what's up, Scoofed? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. A failed attack on the machines ends with a logic virus that infects most of the Yorha androids and turns the machine network berserk. In the chaos, 2B and 9S are separated and she becomes infected with the logic virus. Before it can fully take over her systems, 2B encounters A2 a rogue prototype android completely separate from Yorha and asks for a mercy kill, transferring her memories and mission data into her sword so that A2 can take over a role in the story. Um, I'm going to read the second paragraph here first before I talk about this. Funnily enough, this is the one twist you're least likely to see coming. Everything about Nier Automata leads you to believe that 2B, the main character, is the main character among the trinity of playable androids. 2B is the character in focus on the covers of the game in one version holding a limp 9S and a princess carry. She's the one in all the demos and screenshots, first character you play as in the entire game. She even has a little bit of visual continuity with Yona as an important character in the original Nier for that added implication of importance. What? I actually, that that's an interpretation. I can't really say that it's wrong, but I fail to see it myself. The haircut's kind of the same, and she has white hair, but so does every Nier character. And that's for a reason, actually. Um, well, kind of. There are some implications around it, but basically the stuff that fucks up the Nier universe results in everyone ending up with white hair. It's like a thing. Also, Yoko Taro really just likes characters with white hair, so everyone has white hair. Um, that's just like a thing. Um, like, I can kind of see it. But I don't really think that they were necessarily going for that. But, I mean, that that's not really worth harping on. I, I just found it interesting um, as I was reading it. In the game itself, a series of preview videos shown at the end of Route B imply there's a lot of 2B featuring story to come, so her death about half an hour into Route C comes as a genuine shock. Um, again, I mean, this is all opinion stuff. I can't necessarily disagree that this is where the game hurts itself the most. I can't say that that's wrong. But I wholeheartedly disagree. I think that's one of the cooler things the game does. Um, 
So this person is correct in that all of the marketing presents 2B as the main character. The first two routes of the game present 2B as the main character. And it's all specifically so that this twist hits you um, incredibly hard. And to me, that's one of the cooler aspects of the game, because you very rarely see a game with the balls to do that. And you especially very rarely see a game with the balls to do that in the AAA sphere. Which this was. This was a heavily marketed game. This was a very popular game. They allowed that to be put in the game. Like, I could, I could envision a world where Square Enix is like, no, we're not doing that. That's too much. And they didn't. And I have a lot of respect for that. So whether you like that or not, it is one of my favorite things this game does. Because as far as I can remember, I, I mean, I, I can count on, on a... I can count on a single hand the games off the top of my head I can think of to do something like that. In fact, I think the only other one I can think of is... Um, actually, I didn't say I'm going to spoil that game, so I won't. But it's another popular franchise. It's a visual novel. Um, if you know, you probably know based off that. But if I say anything more, I, I risk spoiling people on a thing that I'm not talking about. And I don't want to do that. Um, so I'll, I'll stop going down that line. But... Um, and I don't actually remember the exact reasons, or if they even do qualify, that that's where the game hurts itself the most. But, like... It's not misleading in a malicious way, it's misleading in a... engaging way. At least in my mind. Because now you're like, oh... That's... really weird. Where are they going with this? And it keeps you wanting to play. And it also allows you... It allows for, like, a complete perspective shift. It changes the entire context of the game. So, like... I don't know. I don't know. Um, and it's been a little under a week since I've read this, so I do actually kind of forget. Like, this is the art in question they're talking about. Like, 2B is, like, featured predominantly, but then you can see in the background A2 taking up equally as much space, just not the focal point. So, like, even then, they were kind of, like, dropping the hints that, like, hey, you can, like, like there is other stuff to focus on, but, you know, you're not going to pick that up until after you've already played the game, and then you're like, whoa, okay, the signs were there the whole time, that's neat. Um, but yeah, here we go. The death of 2B may be one of the more effective twists in Nier Automata, but it's also the start of its downward descent. The 30-minute sequence of the failed attack destruction of Yorha, and 2B's death is the point where Automata tips its hand. By this point, you know exactly what kind of game this is going to be and what it does and doesn't care about, namely 9S and 2B. Literally what? Literally what? This one's harder to defend. Because what 2B is, what her role in the story up to the point that she dies, is a massive point for the rest of the game. The claim that it doesn't care about 9S and 2B is actually wrong? And also, this person will go on to refute this. W with their own words, I assume without realizing it. Um, but but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, but like, no. That's, like, still the crux of the story. I've said before that Nier Automata has a tendency to discard some of its own elements in favor of others. Nowhere is this tendency more obvious than in the relationship between 2B and 9S. Starting with their mirrored routes A and B, the game establishes a dynamic where 2B is used to enhance 9S's story. In these routes, 2B is the good soldier who follows orders and kills machines without thinking too hard about it. 9S is the investigator, the questioner, who still fights as ordered, but who also discovers important truths about the machines he's fighting and the world they inhabit. 2B's route exists so that 9S's route can retread its events and build on it. And once that role is fulfilled, 2B is killed off as the primary motivation for the revenge rampage that is 9S's story in the second half of the game. Later, 2B literally becomes spare parts for 9S as he grafts an arm from one of her bodies onto his own so that he can keep killing machines. 
the climax of the game reveals that the purpose of 2B's entire existence was to watch over 9S and kill him if he ever figured out what actually happened to humanity, because it turns out that 9S is just such a special smart boy that he keeps figuring out the centuries-old conspiracy no matter how many times they reset him. It is no exaggeration to say that on every level possible, 2B exists in this story for the sake of 9S. Um, so we're starting to get into the part where I agree with, but not in the same, I, I don't think the same way about it as this person does. Um, we both see 9S's arc in this game as a negative thing, as a blemish on the game. But to say that 2B, well, I mean, first of all, let's actually return to the, the first point. The game doesn't care about 9S and 2B before describing how 2B continues to be a presence in the game and continues to be a piece of motivation and the relationship between 9S and 2B. I mean, maybe I'm misunderstanding something here, um, but like, that's a big part is their relationship. Um, and maybe I'm meant to read that as like what it does care about, namely 9S and 2B. But like the way it's worded, I kind of get the sense that they mean they don't care about 9S and 2B. Um, it could be me misinterpreting it here, I'm realizing. So I'm just qualifying it, you know, maybe they do realize that, but um, like that is the whole point of the arc. And to say that 2B exists for the sake of 9S, again, isn't wholeheartedly untrue. But it would be more accurate to say that 2B exists to advance the plot of all of the other characters. Not just 9S. Later points about 9S will be correct, but this one feels like it's specifically like leading into that point and ignoring that 2B's death does sort of... Like, 2B exists in this story for the sake of the story not for just for the sake of 9s so i feel like that's misleading to say um i i see what they're getting at i just don't think that this point specifically um is correct so continuing on so if you were one of the players who liked 2B, maybe for her design, her fighting style, the gay, gay vibes of her relationship with her Operator 6-0, um... I don't wholeheartedly disagree with this. There is a little bit of that. But... I don't really think... Like, 6-0 was interested in other Operators. Maybe there's some dialogue here or there that hints at stuff, but... I don't know, I, I definitely wouldn't say that's a focus point of her relationship with 6-0. In fact, I'd say that 2B shuts down most of her advances, if anything, because 2B is very, like, no-nonsense. Um, she also very, very clearly, like... I wouldn't say falls in love with 9S, but she definitely cares deeply about him as well. If anything, we stand a bisexual queen. Um, but I don't know. Again, I'm not going to drive that point home, because Drakengard and Nier are both absolutely for the gays. And I don't want to step on that. Um, I'm, I'm mostly pointing that out because I feel like this person missed a lot of context within the game. Or like wanted to focus only on things that they cared about and anything outside of that is bad, according to this person. Um, which, again, brings me back to if you don't like a thing, you don't you don't like a thing. You don't you don't have to make yourself sound smart and justify it. Um, and again, I don't mean that to say don't write about your opinions. Do, actually. I find that kind of thing fascinating. I find stuff like this super valuable. But, like, again, just word the title differently. Or her, her no mo emotions, loud personality, and the way the facade cracks almost instantly whenever something bad happens to someone she cares about. And tough luck, I guess. Um. I mean. And spoilers for Persona 3, but, like, I just finished playing that game, so, like, too bad. Um, Persona 3 does this, and it's widely considered good, but it's presented here as, like, widely, con as, like, a thing that's widely understood as bad. 
oh, they killed a character that a lot of people liked. That's that's horrible and terrible. Um, interestingly, it kind of reminds me of how people reacted to Joel being killed at the beginning of uh, The Last of Us 2. And that's not a spoiler because it's the first couple hours, so don't get mad at me about that either. Um, but like, just because you like a character, just because a character is widely liked doesn't mean they're immune to death. Plot armor is considered a trope for a reason, and breaking that trope can be used in really powerful ways. Whether it is here or not is up to interpretation, but... I mean, I feel like it's not like a, the sweeping criticism of the game that they seem to, to make it out to be here. She's just one of the many, many Nier Automata characters that exist to get killed for tragedy. This, for reference, is almost every character in the game, including all the other Yorha operators, fighters, and commander, Anemone and the Resistance androids on Earth, Pascal and almost every member of the different machine communities, both, both hostile and friendly. In the absolute best ending of Nier Automata, about five characters survive. In one of the endings, it's as low as one. Everyone else dies for the sake of the tragedy. Death. When I look at Nier Automata's cast and take notice of which characters are considered disposable and which can survive, things start to stand out to me. Did? Did you write this? No. No, I did not. What's up, Sheepy? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're actually tearing this article apart because I find it fascinating. There's so much in here that I agree with, but it's it's interspersed with so much that like shows a lack of of media literacy relating to this game so i'm sort of using it as a as a jumping off point for for my greater point about how i feel about this video game this is also the thing that made me want to do this stream to begin with a lot of tv shows movies and games kill main characters off to varying degrees of success correct Tubi becomes a fisherman, everyone lives. True. True. Alright, so where was I? I guess I'll restart this. When I look at Nier Automata's cast and take notice of which characters are considered disposable and which can survive, things start to stand out to me. I notice how in a playable cast of two women and one man, the first woman is killed off and replaced by the second woman, who in the endings of the game either sacrifices herself to save the one man's life or is killed by him. I notice the other women in this majority female cast who are either killed for or by the one playable man. I don't know the reasons that led to these decisions, but the results speak for themselves. A game that wastes its opening by settling on one of the most been there done that stories in fiction, the revenge rampage fueled by dead women perpetuated by the only playable man in the game. This is where the, the, the author here tips their hand and sort of reveals what their their biggest complaint with the game is and this is also where i kind of start agreeing with them 9s's arc in near automata is boring and overdone to a ridiculous degree um and they'll talk about it later on in the article but near replicant has a very similar plot um, and it's a very common trope where uh important woman to man dies Man, get angry, go on rampage, uh, pee pee poo poo. Um, and of course, that sort of behavior isn't really propped up on a pedestal. With varying degrees of success, uh, that type of media tends to punish said man for that. Um, some will do it like lightly, like a slap on the wrist. Other games like Nier Automata will actually make life a living hell for said man. Um, but it is a very tired trope, and where Nier Automata up to that point in the game has done a very good job of subverting a lot of tropes around this type of game, that specific character arc doesn't. It just does what that trope always does. 9S goes insane, and a lot of people die as a result, and everything sucks. Um, but like that it's boring every other drakengard game has something going on that um i mean i mean it's not my eyes keep going crazy i think because i'm like i'm like looking down and then back up and then my eyes do a weird thing um 
I have lost my train of thought because I my my eyes did the thing. I they keep doing that. And now I'm doing it on purpose, but um, I got distracted by that and I lost my train of thought. But no, um, they are absolutely correct in that 9S's arc fits this trope pretty much exactly. Their reasons for disliking this are uh, howdy, Burby. What's up, Sergeant Doom? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. So other Draconeer games, they do something interesting with that. Um, Near Replicant uses it as a vehicle to tell a much larger story about uh, a multiple thousand year series of events that lead to a lot of really interesting things. It has a lot to say about like people who think they're doing the right thing uh, because of their circumstances and uh, how both sides of a tragic situation can absolutely fully believe they're in the right, uh, despite how evil um, it may look to other people on the opposite side. Um, to that point, it's no, um, it's no coincidence that the main character of Near Replicant's birthday is September 11th. Um, that should sort of speak for itself. Uh, but like it does something interesting with that idea it's not just man goes on rampage because his favorite woman died um it, it is a vehicle for something a little bit more impactful uh drakengard 3 i mean we just did on friday if you were there for the really really long athon run uh we sat through that game as we all know that game does a lot of fascinating things uh it's a really interesting way to tell a story of um and I won't get too into it because I'm definitely not qualified to speak on it, but um, I've, I've definitely seen Twitter threads on it that I, that I found interesting. Um, but one of the primary things that that game tackles, for example, is sexual abuse and the, the trauma and fallout of that. Um, on top of just being an interesting way to tell a story, um, it's, it's interesting in general because the main character is very unique. Um, it definitely doesn't fall into the, the the man goes on rampage trope here because I mean main character is a woman. Um, if anything, she's the woman that sparks the woman to go on the rampage. The dead woman in in question is herself, um, which in and of itself is an interesting twist on on the on the trope. And in near automata, it it is just there for the sake of making the player feel like shit and be upset. So to that end, I agree. 9S, incredibly boring. Possibly the most boring video game twink of all time. Um, but y'all ain't ready to hear that. There he is with his fucking robot head. Fuck this guy. But, uh, yeah. So that is the, the main piece of criticism this person is going to go on about for the rest of the article and I will talk about what I do and don't agree with here but I will say up front that I mostly agree with their take on this specific thing in the game I really can't overstate how completely tired unsatisfying and ineffective the latter half of 9s story is before the two-part revenge quest even begins we as players know both parts are completely pointless So, I've talked about this a little bit, um, but the game absolutely wants you to know more than the combined cast of characters. That That is the main vehicle, well not the main vehicle I guess, but it's one of the, one of the primary vehicles by which the game tells its story. You have so much more info than the other characters that it almost makes you upset. And I think that might be part of this person's later criticisms of the game, which I also kind of agree with actually, but um, like you are absolutely meant to know more than the characters. So earlier when they mentioned like, oh, the plot twists are pee pee poo poo, you expect them, ooh, it's so sad that this twist happens. They definitely missed something somewhere, because most of the plot twists in the game 
aren't twists for that exact reason. It's a subversion of that. It's about what you feel when the characters slowly, as the characters slowly come to the realization. Or don't, in the case of 9S. Um, so continuing on. 9S has sworn vengeance against the machines in A2. The killing either would change nothing about the world. We know that one android has no hope against a planet-wide network of machines, and we know that the vendetta against A2 wouldn't exist if our boy protagonist had just arrived on the, themes, the scene 30 seconds earlier, or hadn't twice been conveniently whisked away from A2 before he could learn the full story of what happened between her and 2B. Death. To add insult to injury, the method of separating 9S and A2 is the same both times. You can almost feel the author's hands at work breaking his own story as he tries to get it to line up just right. This is true. This is actually true. So the first time this happens is when A2 kills not, uh, kills 2B. Um, the way that's set up is 9S is like running across a bridge uh, to get to where that's happening. And the only thing he sees, he gets there a little bit too, uh, too late, he sees A2 kill 2B, and he's like, oh shit, A2 killed 2B, I, I hate A2. I'm gonna kill A2, I'm Angie. And and that's a fair enough reaction with that little bit of information. Um and then and then suddenly fucking big earthquake, bridge snaps in half, he falls down in, in a really comedic way, actually. Like it's really fucking goofy. Um And yeah, like very conveniently he's unable to get the answers right away, so he has time to think, oh, A2 is a murderous asshole. Um Oh no, pee pee poo poo, not realizing that 2B was infected and had to be killed there. Um, and then the second time is a similar thing. Both of them are at the top of one of the one of the pee pee poo poo towers. And fucking before A2 can explain herself, the 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 floor, floor collapses and 9S falls again. Um and it's like, oh, well, I, I guess he has more time to not know what's going on. Um and I agree that that's like, you know, plot convenience <laughs> is kind of a dumb way to get that to happen. Um, but I almost feel like it's intentional. Something intentionally bad or unsatisfying doesn't make the thing good. Ironic shitposting is still shitposting, but I, I have to feel like that's intentional just because I know the way that this man writes his other stories. He's not afraid to, like, use very obvious, very, um, yeah, like, very obvious, very upfront plot convenience to get a point across. Because, again, the point is more about the emotion than the actual events. Which, which is, it, it creates a really interesting way of telling a story. Um, although, again, I do have to agree that the way it's done here I don't really like it. I respect it, but I don't like it. I think it hurts the game in the long run to, to set it up that way. But I, I also don't know how I would do it to make it better. So, I mean, that is really just down to, uh, it's down to personal preference on my part. And you see what I did there? I admitted that I don't like it because I don't like it. And I didn't feel like I needed to justify it with a lot of words. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really the big takeaway <laughs> with uh, with with this discussion we're having here. Um, so moving on, the execution is even worse than the setup. 9S's revenge quest consists mostly of him wandering over to three giant gray boxes that have appeared in the world, going inside and killing a bunch of machines while dealing with a gimmick or two, all the while descending further and further into insanity, as conceptualized by the man who wrote Drakengard. Drakengard mentioned. I do have respect for that, Drakengard mentioned. I would guess that the complete unpleasantness and futility of this sequence is designed to inspire that valued despair, but it completely fails at its objective. It's not tragic to have to play through four hours of a character making stupid pointless decisions while he tries his best not to talk to anyone, and women die left and right so that he can keep going and have things to be mad and sad about. It's awful storytelling, made even worse by the fact that the original Nier already did it so much better. I can't help but feel like this needs more qualification. This person kind of just says this. And again, 
they're presenting something entirely subjective as almost fact to me. Like, first of all, the first place where I start to get skeptical is it completely fails at its objective. Like, maybe for you. But, like, pretty much every tragedy ever involves that exact thing. I mean, did, did you not ever read, like, Romeo and Juliet in, in your, your literature classes? I, like, that is how that works. Pretty much every tragedy is like, oh, well, this wouldn't have happened if everyone had all the information. And that's the point, because in real life, most disagreements boil down to neither side has all the information. And so they fill in the gaps subconsciously or otherwise. And as a result, bad things happen. Um, is it heavy handed in Nier Automata? Sure. Is it objectively bad? Where you say, like, it's awful storytelling? I wouldn't say so. What's going to be effective to one person may not necessarily be effective to other people. I can say a lot of things about this part of the game. I think the whole, like, soul box, meat box, and whatever the third one is. I don't remember what all the boxes were. I don't remember two of them. Um, I didn't like that part. It was boring. There wasn't a whole lot of visual variety. There wasn't much going on. Um... All it really did was set up a little bit more motivation for things to happen that wasn't really necessary because at that point, 9S is already pissed off. Uh, God box, that's the third one. Thank you, Isom. Um, like, there's some cool symbolism there. Um, it does it does sort of add a little bit to characters' motivations, but at the end of the day, all you're really doing is prolonging the game in an effort to show that 9S really doesn't like machines and that A2 also really doesn't like machines. Both things we already know. So you could say like, okay, yeah, well th this part leading up to the final the final sequence in the tower sucks. And and for my money you'd be right. I feel the same way. But like I wouldn't really say that that's awful. I could speculate on why why the game's like that. Something about playtime, um, you know, keep the player playing, um, drive home certain themes, themes, add symbolism, add references to other games. A thing, uh, a thing that um, you know, games do all the time. You you add like a little bit extra so that you can get more context before the final confrontation. It's not like bad. I don't enjoy it, but I can also see where someone might. I, I don't know. I I mean, it is very subjective. I, I take a lot of issue with this paragraph because by, by the end, it's making claims without really backing them up. But I think there's some discussion of the original Nier and how it does it better now. Um, and I think it does sort of make back some of that goodwill. But I just think, like... I feel like that's a flawed statement to make, without at least a little bit more justification. The back half of 2010's Nier was also a revenge story. After an overwhelming, mysterious villain kidnaps his sister or daughter, depending on the country you buy the game in, the titular Nier is either a father or an older brother, Nier pledges to do anything necessary to get her back. The story starts with a familiar narrative we're taught to see positively, of a guy who will do anything to save his family, which is slowly picked apart by the game over time. We see how Nier's quest brings ruins to the places, ruin to the places he visits, as well as both the people who get in his way or help him alike. Eventually, we learn that the future of humanity is in jeopardy, and that Nier's quest will push the entire species over the brink. There's a lot going on in the original Nier that I don't have time to explain here. I urge you to check it out if you don't already know it. The reason for the tragedy in the original Nier is primarily Nier's own character. He has been stuck in a survival mindset for so long willing to sacrifice anything for the sake of his family, that he doesn't realize and then doesn't care that he's sacrificing everything for everyone, dooming even the very girl he was trying to save in the first place. And this is what I'm saying. I agree here 100% that the Nier's story... Go Burb Go, what's the hot take? Yo, what's up Andrew? Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. 
Um, right now we're picking apart an article that's, in my opinion, poorly written, but then we're going to talk more about my thoughts on Nier Automata. The hot take is that I don't think Nier Automata is a masterpiece. I think it's like, I think it's like a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 game, but not like a masterpiece. But yeah, it was good gamer. Um, but like, we've read through that now, and again, I agree. Near Replicant's story has a lot cooler of a setup, a lot cooler of a premise, and again, the revenge story, the angry man motivated by woman in danger trope is used to a lot greater effect there. I, I would never dare to, to not argue that. Again, I don't like 9S or his story. But that does nothing to justify up here that the execution is bad. If that's the story they want to tell, it's executed fine. I don't like it. I think it's boring. I think it's more drawn out than it needs to be. I think there were other things in the game that could have gotten more emphasis. But like, I wouldn't call it objectively bad. I'd call it mid. Alright. But continuing on here... Do I have anything else to say about that, actually? It's mostly set up... It mostly set up how Angie and Lost 9S is, how much humanity is lost. Someone that was once wondering why the robot did what they did to all robots must die, because 2B is dead. Yeah, I mean, it does set up a little bit of interesting motivation. I'm not saying it does nothing. I'm just saying that it, like, mostly establishes stuff that we already could have figured out, I feel like, from, like, the moment where 2B is killed and the bit of dialogue that happens after it. That's all I'm saying. I, th I think the whole thing with the three boxes was mostly unnecessary. But we can, we can dig more into that once we get on to, like, my thoughts on the game. So I'm not going to dwell on that too much, but even though I already kind of did. I just take issue with it being presented like, oh, this is objectively bad. Like, no, you think it's bad. You use the correct words here. <sighs> the game shows that wanting to save your sister or daughter is not a cause worth murdering hundreds of other beings for, and no happy ending ever comes off that kind of slaughter. The best thing Nier can do is sacrifice himself, being deleted from the world, and your PS3 in a metatextual move that Nier Automata will later jack for its own final ending. I have many thoughts on that. Um, they're not relevant to this, so I'll save them. So that his family and friends can at least live the rest of their lives out in peace. In a period where gaming was particularly filled with gritty men killing thousands in the name of women, the original Nier was a memorable counterpoint to those kinds of narratives. Seven years later, Nier Automata makes its predecessor look like a fluke. There's no subversion, no critique, not even catharsis in the 9S story that takes up so much of its runtime. If anything, the game seems incredibly fixated on favoring him over every other character in the game. He gets unlimited reign to rage and cry and freak out, while A2 has to suck up her pain after one boss fight and start to take over the investigative and personal role he's too good for now. And again, either die to save him or just get killed by him. The focus on 9S is just baffling, considering all the other much better stories in the game that get cut off for his sake. Literally what? Literally what? <laughs> so, the way Route C and D is set up in Nier Automata is that you alternate between 9S and A2. 9S's story is about everything that this person is describing. 9S goes on a murderous rampage, he's angry, he's going insane, he's going sicko mode, quirked up white boy, uh, not goaded with the sauce. Um, I would actually say he has no goaded and no sauce. Um, but like, yeah, that is the entire thing. It's not that great, it's tired, it's boring. Uh, it is made worse by the fact that 9S is the least fun character to play as in the game. Um, by far. But the other half of the game, where you play as A2, by this person's own admission even, has A2 doing a lot of investigation, a lot of figuring out what's going on, learning all of the information that 9S is too... 
I mean, he he's too enraged to actually care about. I mean, he even, like, he's told these things straight up, and he just doesn't care. It's the same way that at the end of Near Replicant, Near, or whatever you named your character, is... Like, he doesn't care. At this point, his mind is, I'm going to save Yona. I don't care. He's told straight up that doing that will end humanity. By the end of the game, he knows. He knows that doing what he's about to do is going to cause the extinction of humanity. And that's a thing that... Like, that is the point. He is so upset that knowing that um, doesn't make a difference. He's pissed off. He's angry. He's going sicko mode. Hello there, Burby. What's up, second meme lord? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, and they do a similar thing with 9S. Whereas A2 actually cares about what's going on. She's far more level-headed. Um, she wants to get to the bottom of it. She wants to figure out what's going on. Um, she's had a bit of a change of heart, uh, partially because her memories are mixing with 2Bs, and now she has some level of motivation, um, some level of subconscious care about 9S, uh, for better or for worse. Um, and to that point, I think a lot of that is actually what this person's saying. Like, they're setting it up like, oh, well, A2 has to care about 9S for the trope to work. Um, which, like, yeah, that's not ideal. But there's so much more to that character and that part of the game than this person is giving credit for. Um, and it'll get mentioned later, but I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit, because, like, earlier in the article, Pascal is mentioned as one of the, um, and he'll be mentioned again, as one of the things that the game doesn't explore in favor of the 9S stuff. Which is completely not true. A significant portion of Route C and D is devoted to A2 learning that not all machines are evil because of Pascal. And it also explores this really fascinating story about Pascal and about, like, the nature of tragedy and whether it's better to forget, to remember, or to be killed so that you stop thinking about it. It's, it's, a, it's an implicit choice the game gives you, and there are very slight ramifications, but that's getting too deep into the weeds. My point is that, like, even just in that, what do you mean that's not focused on? What do you mean the game only cares about 9S's arc? It doesn't. There's that. There's A2 and Anemone. And another thing to that, which this person doesn't talk about because in their mind, the game never even explores it. A2 has a lot of history with the Resistance Fighters and early Yorha. And there's a lot of really cool lore there. Tragically, the game does not give you a whole lot of information there. But if you have the context of that, there is some really interesting stuff going on there that the game does put a lot of focus on. It does put a lot of focus on why A2 hates Yorha so much, um, and then continues to compound on why she should continue to hate Yorha, why the player should hate Yorha. Um, so, my thing here is like, it shows that this person wanted to be angry about 9S. And I'm not going to try to psychoanalyze this person. I'm just saying how it reads. I don't know if this is the case or not. But it really seems like this person wanted to be angry about 9S. So much so that they completely missed everything else going on in the game. Was this article written by Aaron Hansen? That would make it make a lot more sense, but no, I don't think so. How can Nier Automata be the worst Drakenir if Drakengard 2 exists? Because Drakengard 2 doesn't count. Uh, I do genuinely think Nier Automata is the worst Drakenir game, but like, not for the reasons that this person thinks, or not entirely anyway, um, which is why I'm using this as a jumping off point. And also just because, again, this, this article is the reason I even had the idea of doing this stream in the first place. Jesus Christ. I'm um, gonna grab my mouse and I accidentally scroll all the way down the damn page. But, uh, continuing on... 
Um, uh, death. And there were so many other more interesting stories in Nier Automata, and here we go, that never got a chance to breathe. What about 2B and her hinted but completely lacking interiority? Um, I don't know what they mean by this. Um, what about God help me the clear attachment she had developed in 9S despite literally being created to serve as executioner? Um, is, is she angry that two characters that spend a lot of time together have a relationship? I mean, I don't want to get Gamergate. What's up, Riker? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to delve into Gamergate. So please don't misunderstand this as me um, dunking on a certain type of type of journalism. Because, like, I, no, I, I do think that uh, non-hetero normative media is good. I do think that that kind of representation. I, I, I think gay relationships in games should be a thing we see more. Um, I think we should see more non-binary people. I think we should see more trans people, etc., etc. But to me, this sort of reads as I'm angry that 2B and 9S have a hetero thing going on. And again, I don't want to make assumptions about what they're saying here, but I don't know. Like, I can't interpret that God help me any other way than that. That this person really wanted 2B to be a lesbian and was disappointed that she's not. Um... And again, that that's me maybe reading between the lines where there's nothing to be read, but I just I can't think of any other way to interpret that. Um, what about A2's revenge story, her history with Anemone, or her reluctant friendship with Pascal? Um, again, what I was just saying. Again, I jumped the gun a little bit, but like A2's revenge story, that's half of the whole route. Her history with Anemone, again. Uh, this was all in supplementary material for the most part, with some hints at it in the game, and I, th I think that is to the game's detriment. I think they should have spent more time on that. Um, but, like, it is there. It's not like the game ignores it. Got my ultrasound results, got a fat liver and one tiny gallbladder stone. Oh, I hope, I hope it gets resolved. I, I hope you're okay, gamer, but what's up, Stalkus? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well otherwise. Um... And then Pascal, and I think it's going to go into more detail here. What about Pascal himself and his endearing little village of communist machines? The, again, this is a significant portion of the route. One of the cooler set pieces in the game has you playing as Pascal. Followed by finding out that Pascal made a very grave error got his entire village killed and has to deal with the guilt that comes with that. That is a significant part of the route leading up to the ending. What do you mean the game doesn't focus on it? Like, what actually do you mean? What, what game did you play? What about Adam and Eve, who get all this initial focus just to ultimately be no more important than any of the other machine bosses in the game? Yes, that was the point. All of the marketing material was intentionally meant to set up a story where Adam and Eve were the antagonists and 2B was the protagonist so that the second half of the game hits that much harder. What do you mean they didn't get enough focus? First of all, the first half of the game is about them. And second, again, I mean, that's the point. Um, I'll let that one slide, though. Um... This was the meat of the game, where all the cool themes and story beats were, and Nier Automata just did not care and chucked it all away. No, it didn't. Um, there's a lot of things I could call that decision. Stupid is one I just couldn't resist, but more than anything else, the word I have to use is disappointing. I can't disagree in the sense that if 9S wasn't half of the final route, they could have used that to focus on cooler stuff. And that is where a lot of my criticism of the game comes from. But to say that they don't do anything with the other themes and the other plot points is flawed to to a significant degree. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, that one I really have no other words besides like, what game did you play? Um. 
Now, actually, on that point, though, I will say that it kind of sucks that all of that's dropped in, like, the final stretch of the game, because the final stretch of the game does entirely have to do with 9S and what's going on with him, with the exception of uh, A2 finding out some of the additional lore bits and what's actually going on. And again, I, I do think that that's missed potential. But that doesn't mean that they didn't explore these things, just that they could have maybe explored them more than they did? I don't know. I don't know. A and B route are pur purposely made to be a typical JRPG story, and B are really just set up for the second half on purpose. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that is the point. Like, throwing away everything going on in that first part of the game, with the exception of the parts that are relevant to the ending, are... I mean, that... That That is the point. There's really nothing more they could have explored there. Adam and Eve are Adam and Eve. Um, one is obsessed to a point of fault with humanity and becoming human, and the other one is dependent on his brother to a fault. And that gets them both killed. It, it is a perfectly started and ended, somewhat generic with some interesting stuff going on JRPG story. There's really nothing more to explore there without beating a horse that plenty of other media already has. You could subvert it a little bit, and the game kinda does, but... I mean, I, I'm not sure what they would want to be explored more there. Um, but again, I mean, that that is very subjective. Like, that's all very subjective. Like, I don't feel like more could be done there. Maybe could, more could be done there, but to say that that's a flaw of the game and presented as such feels disingenuous to me. Um, and again, I think that has more to do with the way the article's written and some of the wording they use than anything else. But like... I don't know. I don't know. Um, and again, I mean, I say like, you know, exploring more of that when it's, when it's kind of a thing that a lot of games have done wouldn't be productive. It... I mean, again, yeah, that is exactly the same way I feel about 9S's arc. I don't like what they do with 9S in this game. I really don't. Um, at least from what I remember of the game, and we'll, we'll touch on that further, because again, I, I do... You know, some of my... A lot of my opinion on this game has more to do with memory and things I know about the game than any kind of recent experience with it. So, it's also possible that a lot of this will change. But with how I feel about the game currently, I agree that 9S's arc is incredibly boring. But, like, where A and B was intentionally by the books, ending C is presented in a way where it feels like they're trying to be subversive and it's not. That, that can be a genuine criticism on its own. I'm just genuinely lost how they make the leap to saying that ending A and B isn't explored enough. So here we go. Worst game of the year is a designation that comes with some qualifications, finally. Naturally, it's a judgment based on my personal experience with the games I played this year. There were probably games that came out this year that I would have liked less than Automata, but I didn't play those games whether because of coincidence, limited resources, or because I heard bad things about the game and decided it wasn't worth checking out. When it comes to worst or best game of the year, I have to work with what I have. I'm not capable of judging games I haven't played beyond saying whether or not they sound like things I would enjoy. Uh, death. The second qualification is that a game has to be a specific kind of bad to get the distinction of worst. For example, I played Alan Wake this year. I bounced off it after about three hours, uh, finding nothing about it really interesting or worth the time. I put a video of the rest of the cutscenes on in the background while I did some schoolwork, only because I have to see how things end. Um... Sorry, my body was self-destructing. I have to find my place again. At this point, I've forgotten most of what happens. Alan Wake is a pretty bad game, but I don't really care. I bought it for a pittance, possibly for free. I honestly don't remember. Played it for an afternoon and moved on. It was bad, but it was the same kind of bad that blueberries occasionally are. I eat it to scallop the taste, but then I eat another blueberry and move on. I can't disagree with this take, although I find it fascinating that Alan Wake catches a stray here. Um, I was always under the impression that a lot of people liked Alan Wake. I may be wrong in that assumption, I've always thought it was kind of mid. Um, I still need to play Alan Wake 2, because that seems like a game I would actually like a lot. Um, 
but I general, generally hear good things about Alan Wake and all the other games that that they that, that team has made. Um, I've heard good things about Control. That's another game I need to play. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's fair enough to think Alan Wake is Alan Schleep, you know? I'm just not sure why that one specifically catches a stray here, and I'm not sure what point it's advancing. Aside from... You know, a game being, like, not my cup of tea is, like, not as bad as a game that I thought I would really like and then didn't. And I can agree with that. If you buy a game like this person did with Nier Automata, um, and you expect it to be something and then you're disappointed with what it actually is, that to me is actually worse than just playing a game that you had no opinion on going in and ended up not really liking. You found it boring, you know, whatever, pee-pee-poo-poo. -poo. Um, I agree with that. Again, the wording here. <laughs> You've gone, I mean, I mean, within a paragraph. Well, I guess, like, the paragraph before. So, like, like whatever. Um, semantics. It's a judgment based on my personal experience with the games I played this year. Followed by, Alan Wake is a pretty bad game. I don't really feel like I need to explain that one, but this is exactly what I mean with the language. Like, you could have said here, like, I thought Alan Wake was a pretty bad game, but I don't really care. I didn't really go into it caring about it. Near Automata, on the other hand, I went into it caring about. But instead, they chose to say Alan Wake is a pretty bad game. Which is an interesting lack of self-awareness here. I don't think I don't think this person is a professional um, journalist or anything. So like. I'm able to extract the intent from it. I just feel like... I think, if anything, I feel like I'm reading a rough draft. I feel like this needed peer review, and it probably didn't get it. Can you click on their name? Yeah, I'll do that at the end to, to sort of see what else they've written. Because I really do think some of it might just be a lack of experience. I know earlier on they mentioned that... Uh, they are in school at the time. So, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of that as well. Like, like, I can't stress enough that I'm not necessarily dunking on this person. I just don't think this is a well-written article. But continuing on for now, to be the worst game of the year, a game has to be the kind of bad that sticks with me. It has to get under my skin and really lastingly affect me with how bad it is. I have to think about the worst game of the year for months after I play it. I have to care enough to write a five-page article about it, or at the very least, to still be disappointed with it even though I haven't touched it since, let's say, March. Nier Automata is that kind of bad. Again, not because there's nothing about it that I like, or even one thing that I really hate, but specifically because it gets so fixated on this awful story that it actively destroys everything that drew me in the first place. And this is without even once mentioning all the more technical issues. And here we go, full circle, I'll talk about this in a sec including a totally abysmal lack of controller functionality in combat that would be a slog, even if I pro could probably move my damn character. But whatever, I can forgive bad controls or bad design under some circumstances. A bad story that really lets me down, and it's Nier Automata's truly failed story that earns it the title of Worst Game of the Year. So, first of all, with the performance, again, I, I mentioned it previously, and, and the statement still stands, they chose to... Um, they chose to play on PC at launch, and while they couldn't have known that Nier Automata's PC port would be infamously bad for how it launched, it was. And I think that may have had something to do with their criticism as well, although I can't speak to it because it wasn't a big focus of, of their, of, of their uh, article. But I can't help but feel like if they had gotten it on PS4 from the get-go, they probably wouldn't have been as harsh on the game. Um, but it's like saying... Like, I understand if you go into a thing that you think you're really going to like, 
and then it ends up not being what you wanted to a point where you, you like really don't like it, you thought it was bad. You know, I get that. That would be my um that that would be my my worst game of the year because like yeah i wanted something really good i got something like mediocre maybe even bad you know that's worse than a game that's like objectively worse you know like if i played ride to hell retribution a game about people riding motorcycles and like big muscly boys Like, that's a horrible dog shit game. Mechanically, story-wise, everything. But if I play that, I'm not playing it because it's something I'm really interested in. I'm not, like... You know, I'm not, like, invested in that. But if, like, Drakengard 4 came out next year, like, the, the same year that I play that, and it ends up being dog water, crossing my fingers, fingers that doesn't happen, um... You know, yeah, that's going to be way worse, even if the game itself is, like, better on every level. I get that. But again, it has more to do with the way it's written. A lot of this is presented as, like, this is a thing that's objectively bad and nobody's talking about it, more than it is, hey, everyone likes this, and I don't like it for these reasons, um, and I think that that's valuable. And I do think that that's valuable. But it's about how it's presented, and I, I, I do think the author here definitely could have communicated better that that was the case. All right, good night, Stalkers. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you for stopping in. But, like, I think I think that's pretty much my biggest takeaway is just, like, the way that this person's opinions are presented kills it more than, than, than the actual arguments itself. Because while I don't agree with them, a lot of them are subjective. Um, some of it... I kind of feel like it's, how did you miss this? This was like a big part of the game. But I'm also not going to act like recency bias isn't a thing here. You know, like I said, the, the last stretch of the game is pretty much entirely about 9S, and it's his, his deep dive into insanity. And I don't like that. I think that Nier Automata's ending is abrupt and also bad. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. And I can see why that might make you forget about some of the other things the game did that aren't as recent. So you're not going to be thinking about them because there's this very bad thing that you just experienced. But you can't like go and then write an article where you just sort of demonstrate that recency bias. Nier Automata isn't as good as everyone says. Yeah, that could have worked too. I think one of the things I said right after reading it is, like, if this was an article framed around just the trope of, like, man goes on murderous rampage because of dead women, but, like, with a focus on Nier Automata, I think there's something here. But I feel like extending that and then, like, looking at the entire game through that lens is a flawed way to look at the game. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of like different different ways to go about it. Like, like I do think that that's a flawed lens to look through the game. Although, if that is how you feel about the game, that's how you feel about the game. But uh, you know, again, the big theme here: don't don't present that as like this is objectively bad writing. Present it as like, hey, maybe this game isn't a masterpiece. I didn't like it because this, that, the other thing, pee pee poo poo. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But that's like the most striking thing to me is, is, is it kind of feels like this person, despite saying that they don't expect to change anyone's minds, is kind of salty that people like the game, despite the things they didn't like. Again, I don't want to make assumptions about this person and what they were thinking when they wrote the article, but I mean, that's sort of just the vibe I get. Um. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I do think that articles like this are valuable. I think there's something to be gained from this. I was gonna I was gonna look at this person. They, she, and I have been using they pronouns. I did see that when I was reading it originally, so I've been trying to be conscious of that. Um from the creator of any songs to read Lennon to. 
they don't really have any... Yeah, they don't have any, like, other social links, although I don't want to stalk this person. I did not play Red Dead Redemption. Shit, fair enough. Me either. But yeah, I don't know. It looks like they make a lot of, uh, a lot of opinion articles. Or at least they did. Their last one was, what, 2019? And I'm not really going to read anything else from them, because it's not really the point here, but... And again, I don't want to, like, say that they're a bad writer. Everyone starts somewhere. Again, they mentioned that they were working on schoolwork. They were in school at the time that this was written. You know, they're probably going for some kind of, like, journalism or writing or something. And, you know, you learn and you improve. I just think that there was a lot to improve on in this article more than anything. But, uh... Here's where we get into the real meat and bones of all of this. Um, so let me let me make myself big again. We're about to get serious. Buckle up, gamers. Um, and I've been talking about it all the way through, so a lot of this is probably going to be repeat. But uh, I actually do genuinely think that Near Automata is. Um, Actually, on that point, though, having a contrary opinion is valuable, express them in a way that makes sense and supports your argument is the best way and is important. Probably just knew we were writing articles. You know, I say all that, I should qualify. Like, I'm definitely not a writer. I don't really write. Um, I'm not even sitting here saying that I could write an article like this better. Hindsight's 2020. I have the article in front of me. I can pick it apart. I can... I, I will absolutely admit that if I tried writing something like this without doing, like a lot of research and a lot of like you know rewriting and revision and stuff I, I genuinely don't think i could do better at getting my point across i'm not that smart i don't think like i'm some god tier opinion burb i i acknowledge that i am i'm dumb um <laughs> so like again i i just i cannot stress enough that i'm not dunking on this person and in fact, I, I have a lot of respect for them because looking through the other articles they do write, they talk a lot about like stuff personal to them, and that takes a lot of courage. And, you know, especially writing something like this or, you know, stuff like that that's more personal as like a trans person. I mean, that's like, that's impressive to me. I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for that. And I have a lot of respect for the person for putting their opinion out there. That is a, a valuable thing to do. Um, so I, mean, I just, I really feel like I need to emphasize that point. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that the arguments made and the way that they were made are incredibly flawed. Um, so yeah. But all of that, sort of a jumping off point for me to kind of talk about my thoughts on Nier Automata. So again, we're going to be retreading a lot of water, but a lot of my problems with the game do have to do with, um with the second half of the game and especially towards the end what it does um and and i do need to qualify a little bit that some of my opinion is biased because i am i am a wider i am a wider uh dragon guard enjoyer and i i i am not immune to falling into the same trap that shin megami tensei fans do when it comes to persona video games where i'm like oh well the older ones were better the originals better rah 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 there is some kind of that implicit bias in my game because I in 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 my mind because I do I do like Dragon Guard a lot compared to Near, uh, especially Near Automata, and part of that absolutely is the subconscious in me being like, oh well, Near Automata is bad because Near Automata popular, you know that sort of thing. So I should say that like, you know, I think some of it has to do with that, that, that I do think it's the worst Drakonir game. So I'm definitely not the most unbiased going into this, but like... <sighs> I think what gets me there though, and the reason I bring all that up, is because a lot of the discourse surrounding Nier Automata is like, and let me pull up to illustrate this point, hold on. Um, I'll put it on the screen here in a moment. I just type in Nier Automata essay. Let's scroll through some of these. 
and you'll see I've watched these because I, I I do enjoy listening to points that I might uh, I might not necessarily agree with for the sake of having a more well-rounded understanding of things like how near automata tells the ultimate humanist fable near automata retrospective still one of a kind this video is really good the six hour one do watch this i think i posted that at one point why near automata could only only work as a game which i mean i don't want to call this person out i, I haven't watched this one clearly but just kind of gives me the it kind of feels like it's going to be a kind of pretentious game about video game uh, video about video games as art um moist meter based near automata in the human condition the most philosophical game ever the moment i realized near automata is a masterpiece The masterpiece you probably won't play. This one's infamous. <laughs> um, you get my point. You get my point. Um, a lot of people like to call this game a masterpiece. And that, I think, does sort of influence me a little bit. Because it's not. Every other game in the series has done what it's doing, with the exception of maybe Drakengard 1, because that game does it in an incredibly obtuse way. Um, like, they do what they're doing better than Nier Automata does. Um, and part of... There's, there's a lot of angles I could tackle that from, so this is going to be very stream of conscious. I'm just going to go through my... Uh, my grievances with the game in no particular order. I'm going to try to go start to end, though. Um, so the first one that comes to mind is that it feels like it tries to, tr to retread a lot of the same ground that Near Replicant does. Not necessarily in the themes that it's carrying, because it doesn't really. They're, like, they're similar, but they're not the same. But more in the structure. Um, so, Near Replicant is a game where the first half of the game is, and really the way the endings are structured, Near Automata does do this better because it keeps the game fresh throughout, so it really amounts to like one quarter of the game, but, um, how do I, how do I word this? Like, the first half of the game... It's set up like a traditional JRPG. You are a guy, your sister or your daughter is sick, depending on which version of the game you're playing. You gotta go solve that problem. Um, you meet a magical book, you get the power to do it, you go through, um, blah, 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 blah. You get all the stuff and things, you get the plot MacGuffins, and then you go, you go do the thing, and oh, whoops, a uh, big plot twist, you just gets kidnapped, big setup. Now, you're in the second half of the game and suddenly where you were playing a pretty traditional collect the things save the world game you are now playing a game where you are challenged at every turn and confronted with hey maybe the thing you're doing isn't so good is it ha ha he hoo hoo and it's a big bait and switch because the first half of the game is you know pretty generic and the second half of the game flips out on his head it's not anymore Near Automata, as we discussed, does the same thing. The first half of the game, routes A and B, are a pretty standard JRPG story up until the end of Route B-ish, where you get the first hints that something's not quite right. It's not quite the same thing. It's not like, oh, the things you're doing are bad. It's more like the things you're doing are meaningless because the, the god that you have created to fight for... Um, isn't real it's it's extinct um so like you know different themes but it does the same sort of setup and then it pulls the trigger and i think in execution near automata does do it better like i said the gameplay variety is a lot better near replicant you have to play that game four times doing the same exact thing with slightly different dialogue uh near automata you get actual new gameplay sections but the whole thing is set up 
the same way. It does it does the same thing. Um, the story structure is, you know, for all intents and purposes, the same. Um, all the way up to the final ending, where it does the, and I said I would go back to it because it was in the article, the end, where uh, it's like, oh, do you want to sacrifice your save file for to help someone else? Do you want to do you want to delete all your saves? And I cannot fault people for seeing this one and thinking it was a masterpiece of subversion. But in the greater context of it being a sequel to Near Replicant, that aspect of the game specifically feels so heavy-handed and forced, and it didn't need to be there. A lot of people will go on and on about how it's... And again, like I get it, because people played Near Automata first, so it was cool. It was like a thing that games had never done before. But the own series... It... The, the series had already done that, and better, because it tied it into actual, like, themes of the story. Um, and then Near Automata kind of comes out of left field. It's like, oh, uh, the game's online, actually, and you can send your save file to help someone else, uh, pee pee poo poo. Which, I mean, in a loose sense, kind of fits with other themes of the game, but not really. I think my biggest thing is it just has nothing to do with the with the rest of the game. Like it feels like it's just there to shock the player. Whereas in Near Replicant, yes, it was there to shock the player. It was there for shock value. But it also made sense in the context of the story. Because you were like Like you had to do that to give the replicants more time because your existence was going to cause a problem and speed up the process of human extinction and then also ending e it sets up a really cool ending e which for the longest time was a novella but actually got added into into replicant which is which is pretty cool the, the re-release had it and I, I liked it a lot um I could talk on end about how that was misinterpreted too within the within the context of the lore of the series, but that, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. My point is, that whole thing was just there because they felt the game needed to do the same thing that Near Replicant was doing. It was kind of unnecessary outside of being a cool gameplay thing. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it just feels hollower in the context of the rest of the series. I, th I think is my biggest complaint there. Um, but more to stuff that actually is a complaint is a lot of the stuff the article we read already went over. So you get through ending A and B, um, and then you get to ending C and D where, where more stuff's going to happen. You start to find out, oh, this is what's really going on. This is what's actually happening. Um, and most of that's good. That second half of the game has a lot to say about like humanity and the game's themes and it does really well i've talked at end about how i really like the stuff with a2 and you know the gray area of moral authority is it better for your hot to lie to everyone for the sake of giving people a reason to live or is it better for your hot to not exist and not cause the tragedies that it did um the the intentionally uh manufactured tragedies and does that matter the androids are given the ability to feel and think and reason, and yet they're treated as tools in this greater project of, of making people forget that humanity is extinct, giving them a reason to continue existing, um, in itself acknowledging that the androids have, um, have some level of humanity such that they do need a reason to live. Um, like, is it unethical to intentionally destroy machines in order for other machines to have a um, have a reason to live. And it's interesting because if you see the androids as humans, as the game very intentionally sets it up, well, yeah, obviously that's terrible. You don't kill some people so that other people can feel better, obviously. But they are androids. So it creates a really interesting thought experiment there. Um, What's up, Kaim? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The stuff with Pascal, to a greater extent, the machines, they don't look human. Um, the way they act human is a lot more primitive, a lot more, like, 
I guess you could almost say... <laughs> maybe this is a bad comparison, but I'm allowed to make it because I have ADHD. You could almost say that the machines are... Androids with ADHD. <laughs> um, because their whole thing is that they pick one thing to base, like, to, like, focus around, to make their thing, and that's what they do, and they have no interest in anything else. Um, so to some extent, I mean, that... Their humanity isn't really well-rounded in the way that the androids are. So it makes the... Um, It makes the whole setup of Pascal having to live with the consequences of teaching the robots fear, causing them to focus on that fear only, leading to them intentionally Roblox oofing uh, for the sake of monetization. Um, that's really, really fascinating. Because what you don't know like, what the game cannot possibly answer, due to the way that it's set up. Is Pascal actually going to be traumatized by this thing? Is it better to kill him? Is it better to leave him alive? Is it better to wipe his memory? Could it be that that's just Pascal's thing now, and when Pascal finds another thing, that would all go away? I mean, what level of depth does the, the self-awareness of the machines have? And that also varies from machine to machine, as we see with the Red Girls. The Red Girls have a lot more going on than a lot of the other machines you see in the game. Again, there's some really cool stuff going on there. But 9S's arc... ...sucks. It's near replicant without the replicant. It's just a revenge plot. Sure, he does some fucked up things, mostly for shock value. We talked about, well, the article talked about how, uh, how he grafts parts of 2B onto him to repair himself. Um, mainly anyone who sees Nier Automata NSFW fan arts in group chats. I don't frequently see it anymore. I definitely saw a lot of it back when the game was, like, newer, like the first three years, but not so much anymore. Um, I don't know. Interesting question for chat, though. But, uh, where was I? No. Yeah, 9S sucks. There's some cool stuff in there. Um, so, like, 2B, 9S, I mean, grafting parts of 2B onto him, giving himself the Red Eye virus, um, also linking the Red Eye virus to other Drakengard games. Kind of cool. There's a lot of cool, like, inner universe stuff going on. Um, like, Nier Automata has a lot of cool stuff to discuss with regards to the overarching plot of the entire series. But that's not necessarily what I care about. Um, she is supposed to be the prior evolution compared basically to us versus Neanderthals. Um, yeah. And again, that's part of like... And, and I'll, 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 I'll end all this on a discussion of that, because I am definitely not an expert on Nier Automata lore, where I am, like, the rest of the games I have a lot of... Uh, I have a lot more idea of the nuance of what the stories are about when compared to Nier Automata, which is something I want to fix. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to have this to look back on to see how my opinions have changed after I uh, replay the game for the channel. Um, but like... Am I stupid? I think I'm just tired. Where was I? Oh yeah. No, 9S, like, there are some cool moments. There are some cool moments. I think, again, it is mostly shock value, like, you know, I mentioned the 2B stuff. Uh, also that part where he has to fight a bunch of 2Bs. Yeah, basically the entire tower section. There's some cool, like, symbolism in terms of, like, oh, video games as art. <gasps> Which I do think video games can be art, let me be clear, but I think a lot of people that talk about it do it just to sound pretentious. I don't want to psychoanalyze people, but... I think there is a lot of that in, in that realm of discussion. Not everyone, probably not even most people, but you do see that. Um, but in terms of like being an artistic statement, there's some cool stuff going on in the tower. The the final stretch of the game um, is what we're referring to here for those who may not know what the tower means. Um, 
but it mostly focuses on, again, a really boring story of 9S really hates A2 and machines, and he really wants to kill A2 and the machines. Um, and that's boring. That's boring as shit. So I say all that about I like the stuff with like Pascal, Anemone, the other stuff, mostly the stuff going on on the A2 side of that part of the game. Because to the person who wrote the article's credit, they are 100% right. Why was all of that wrapped up before the ending of the game so that they could end the game on the most boring part of the story? It was a deliberate choice, and I respect it, and I respect that that's the story that the writers wanted to write. I just don't like it. And I think that's my biggest gripe with the game, is that, like, I think... I think they could have picked a better thing to be the main plot. I don't know what. I'm, uh... I'm definitely not a games writer, I'm definitely not an expert. But I, I, I think there's a world where they, they had a they chose a better plot. Um to, to to end the game on. Um And then again we already talked about ending E. Also in the tower there's a reference to the near replicant library, and the only reason it's there to be is to be, oh look, the near replicant library. Isn't that cool? And and it serves really no other purpose. Um, so it kind of feels, I don't know, forced. You don't have to be a writer to critique flawed writing. Exactly. I'm mostly just saying, like, I'm saying all this, I don't have a better solution. I feel like a lot about the game would have to change to be able to make the ending different. So, you know, again, like I want to say, I respect that that's the story they wanted to tell. And if you like it, you like it. I just don't. I find it to be the most boring main plot of any of the Dragon Guard games. And and that's a big part of why. Um But all of that to say, and I could get into the gameplay, but that's not really like that's a whole other thing. I can I can discuss that when I when when that's the focus of the thing. Um But like the theme here has been the plot, but I do think the gameplay suffers a little bit. Um to give a to get to give a brief summary about how I feel about how Nier Automata plays, it has a lot of like combat depth. Like you can do some really cool combos. There's some really interesting weapon synergies. But for what? Like for what purpose does it actually serve? And if you really dig into it, the answer is to be flashy and that's it. Um but, uh, like, like, not to say that combat that feels good is bad, but, like, I don't know. I mean, it's Platinum Games. You can look at other games they've done, like Bayonetta, um, that Transformers game, uh, pretty much any of their other games, really, besides, uh, what was that fucking one? The, 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 the Games as a Service game. Um, the one that's already discontinued. Um, Babylon's Fall, that one. That game is ass. Um, but, or was ass, I should say. It doesn't exist anymore. Isn't that fucking goofy? Um, like, I think, I think the best way to put it is I don't think the gameplay that Nier Automata had meshed well with the semi-open world concept. I think that's how I would I would describe the gameplay of Nier Automata. Um but that's that's like a very surface level how I feel about it. Because I I do think it's a fun game. Um but uh Yeah, I don't know. We've mostly talked about the story stuff, but like again I say all this with the knowledge that I have not done a full, like, sit-down, playthrough near Automata and re-experience it for myself in a long time. So I think it, it will be valuable to me to have done this, like, stream of consciousness, talking about, you know, how I feel about the game based on memory. 
because at some point, probably not too far from now, I think it's going to be whenever I finish my next JRPG, be that Yakuza or FF7R, I think I'm going to do Nier Automata. And I think it'll be interesting to see how my opinion changes, because a lot of this is from like my memory of playing it and then my experiences with what I've seen and heard of the game since then. So a lot of this is admittedly less informed than, you know, I, if this were like an actual video essay, I, I would not be proud of this. But I did think it would be fun to get on here and like talk about how I feel about it with the qualifier that like, you know, I'm 100% open to changing my mind about the game. But uh, yeah, I just thought this would be an interesting stream. Plus, I wanted to talk about that article in more detail. So, we got a couple of couple of cool things out of it. Uh, ow. Also that. There you go. That's that's my thoughts on Nier Automata right there. Um I really need to see a doctor. <laughs> um I'm fine. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else to talk about though. Um Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Just kind of thought this would be fun because I had a topic in mind. Like I said towards the beginning, and I know a lot of people hopped in later, so you may have missed this part, but this was also sort of like a trial run of a type of stream I want to do similar to this, where, like, um, I guess you... I, I think I described it as a live video essay, sort of, um, in terms of format where I kind of just like pick a thing that I think I have interesting things to say about and then ramble about it for an hour or two and talk with y'all about it and then we, we can like discuss. It's like book club, but for video games. Um, so I think it's neat. I think it's a good break between like, uh, between gaming streams to do something more unique like this. So let me know if y'all like this. I, I would be, I would love to do more. I think I have a lot of opinions on a lot of things and I could try to try to come up with more um yeah yeah I think it's a cool idea it's not really something I've seen I mean at the end of the day I guess it really is just a just chatting stream but I feel like I don't know when you think of like a just chatting vtuber stream um oh um the discord command actually does work today so here you go second meme lord I think this links to the right one. It does. Yeah, stream elements bots working today. Um Yeah, so I think this kind of thing would be fun. It sounds like y'all liked it, seeing a lot of positivity about it in the chat. But uh no, what was I saying? No, when you think of like a VTuber just chatting stream, you sort of have like this like I don't want to say this was high stakes, but low stakes is the first thing that comes to mind. Like it's just talking about like random pee pee poo poo so i don't see as much like hey here's a topic that i really want to say my opinion on in a really like lengthy in-depth getting to the soul of the matter type gunch um again i say as if this was a really serious topic it wasn't it's it's a fucking video game and any future ones would also just be video games but um i don't know i don't know i like the idea i feel like it fits better with my vibe um, so, I don't know. I'll probably keep calling them just chatting, but the concept of a live video essay. Well, I guess, I guess that's kind of just a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> Holy shit, Ezra Andromeda, white person on the internet with a podcast? That's never been done before. <laughs> But, I don't know, I don't know. I do think I want to do more of these, though. This was fun. It got my brain working. It's a little bit different from my usual streams I would do, where I just put on a... put on a video game on my screen, and I... Ooh, we're killing the monsters and collecting the loot, and a... Fucking, uh... Fucking, uh, you know, just zone out. Say D's nuts a lot. Um... Yeah. This is a little bit different, so I hope y'all liked it. Want to do more. 
might make it every other week, but I'll try to come up with one for next week because I'd like this to be a weekly thing. Add more variety. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. At this point, I'm just going to keep rambling. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end. Uh, let me see who's live so we can raid. Redirect. Shoot. All right. Uh, we got some options. What do y'all want to go watch? We have um, we have Kuro doing a tier list. We have Xander doing. It looks like he's talking about anime. Spring 2024 anime. We've got Obake Pam doing Final Fantasy 14, the Heaven's Ward finale, so the end of the Heaven's Ward expansion. And we have Harima Tem doing the new Chilla's art game. What do we feel in chat? Where do y'all want to go? I feel like I want to raid Xander, actually. I haven't raided Xander. I, I haven't had an opportunity to raid Xander in a hot minute. So I might just do that. Chill is art. Xander time. Yeah. I'm I'm feeling Xander. I like Xander. It's uh it's not Wednesday. I was gonna say it's Wagugus Wednesday, but it's actually Tuesday. For another couple hours. Um so we'll go do that. Go enjoy that. Go enjoy Xander talk about anime. Or don't. I'm not your boss. I'm only your boss when I'm live. After that you can do whatever you want. You've been let out of the basement until tomorrow. Um Speaking of tomorrow, we're doing more uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, and I think this time we are actually genuinely going to do a stream where it's mostly story. Um, I've said that for the past like three or four Yakuza streams, but uh, whatever, maybe this time I'll be correct. Um, I'm your Discord mod, I'm never let out. True! True! True. This post has been fact-checked by Real Corp Discord. Real Corp Piss Crew Patriots. God, I miss Real Corp. Um, but yeah, go uh, go enjoy go enjoy Xander. Xander's pretty cool. Never met him. He's pretty sick. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it for me. See y'all tomorrow for Yakuza, and see y'all Friday if not Wednesday for a needy streamer overdose. Y'all better be there for needy streamer overdose because I am the streamer and I am needy. And I want to overdose on pit crew members? I don't know. I don't want to say that. That's that's a weird implication. But anyway, I'm really excited for that stream, actually. I've been wanting to play that game for a while. And I was reminded of it recently. So definitely tune into that. Um, and yeah, we got some cool stuff. So check out the schedule on Twitter and Discord. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pee pee poo poo. And yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be it for tonight. I actually... Didn't stream for four hours, so I can go to bed on time tonight. Let's fucking go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end stream. All right. See y'all tomorrow. Oh, superb. Mm, bye bye.